Hey guys, Heidi Easley here at Texas Art and Soul, and um, I teach women how to make money teaching paint parties, and I wanted to spend just a little bit of time with you tonight. Um, I don't know how long this will last, hopefully not too long. I just wanted to kind of take some time and share my story, but also share um, three ways art can bring hope and kind of how um, God used art to save me um, when I was going through a rough time. So if you have anybody that you think may could use this right now, um, please feel free to share this if there's somebody that you know maybe needs a project. Um, something they want to create. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm creating right now through this time and then also share just um, hopefully some little things. So I'm going to try to set this here. I don't know if that's weird because it's like my hat's making my eyes <laughs> look like I have raccoons. So tell me when you get on here and then go ahead and make a comment so I can see who is on here because right now I can't see the stuff and I'm going to share a little bit about big magic as well. So I'm going to share three things, how art can and can bring hope. And then I'm also going to share a little bit about my story. So um, thank you all so much for being here. And how is everybody doing? How are y'all doing right now? Is, you know, everybody kind of, I know we're all kind of just doing our own thing, trying to get through this. And so I just want to check on y'all and see how y'all are doing. Let me see if I can see the comments. Oh, hold on. Go ahead and say hi as you come on. Let me see if I can see them. Sometimes once I make a comment, it's like now I start to see all of y'all's. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, number one, purpose. All right, so how many of y'all have read, I've told y'all a zillion times to read this book. It was recommended to me by um, Patty Palmer, who I love so, so much. And this book made such a big difference in my life. And one of the quotes, hey guys, hey Julie. Um, one of the quotes was um, my favorite, and it has stuck with me for years since I've read this. And so if you haven't read it yet, take some time or listen to the audio book. But it said, um, this, she met this old lady, and she said, we, spend, we all spend our 20s and 30s trying so hard to be perfect because we're so worried about what people will think of us. Then we get into our 40s and 50s, and we finally start to be free. Because we decide that we don't give a damn what anyone thinks of us, but you won't be completely free until you reach your 60s or 70s when you finally realize this liberating truth. Nobody was ever thinking about you anyhow. And that's a quote from um, Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic. So how many of y'all have been been reading that or have read that? Um, yeah, so quilting and painting like crazy, so I don't go crazy. Yes, I have been painting like crazy too. Um, the reason I wanted to share that first one, um, purpose, is because I want y'all, especially now, like a lot of things have like um, put things in perspective for people. Is that kind of bothering? It's kind of bothering me. It's like my eyes are like weird. Um, it's kind of put things in perspective for people where they're they're done being scared of what other people think. And so what I've noticed, and I don't know if y'all have been noticing this, but it's like a renaissance of creatives wanting to create lately. Because what has happened and is that we're to this point where we're kind of all like reevaluating our life. I don't know if y'all have done that, but I have definitely been doing that, kind of reevaluating my life. What do I want out of life? Um, we're not promised tomorrow, so what can we, what can we, you know, make purposely happen? And so, um, so this book, you know, that I read years ago, it kind of brings that forth again. And I've seen a lot of people that you know, normally have wanted to share their, their talents or their painting online that have been so scared to do it. And now they're like, I don't care. I'm going to do this because first off, I just need some sanity of talking to another human. Maybe they're not talking back, but you know, I need some sanity of maybe talking to someone and, and then just getting through this time. So, um, so if you haven't, if you have read this, put yes in the comments. If you haven't, Read this book. You've got to read this book. And that's one of my favorite, favorite quotes because I'm so glad I read that book and I started this in my 30s. Um, I actually kind of started it in my late 20s. So let me back up and share my story just a little bit. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Um, so a lot of you are new to me and a lot of you have already heard this story. So if you have, I'm so sorry. But I just wanted to share because I know a lot of people right now are scared and they're thinking, 
Like, what if I lose everything? You know, how am I going to get back from that? And I know this is a different situation. However, you know, back in 2007, 2008, when, you know, a lot of the economy crashed and a lot of people lost their houses, we were one of those millions of people that did. At the time, I did not realize that we were one of millions of people. I just thought we were the only, the only person. Oh yes, Deborah, definitely. And I can put a um, screenshot of it too but definitely read this book. It's a game changer. It's called Big Magic. Um, but I didn't realize at the time that we were one of the millions too. I just thought we were the only ones that were losing our house, losing our cars, everything. And um, and it really like put me in this, this kind of depression. And I was really sad and I was really like embarrassed. I mean, I didn't talk about our bankruptcy for many, many, many years. And so um, what led me to talking about it is I was talking to somebody, I was at a business conference or something. I mean, again, it was fast forward years later. And, um, and somebody kind of challenged me on it. And they said, why, you know, and I was teaching, I was teaching um, high school students at the time. And they were like, why do you think if you share your story, that what do you think is going to happen? Like, do you think that your high school, I was like, well, I don't want my students to know. And um, I don't want them to, you know, like they respect me and then they would know something like this about me. You know, it would make me human, you know, and I had this fear around it. And, and he challenged me and he's like, well, what do you think is going to like, do you think you have that much power over what happened to you is going to, what is it going to do? Turn them into drug addicts? Like, really, what do you think you sharing your story would do to them? And, um, and it just kind of opened up this thing, like, why do, like, and again, it kind of goes along with this quote, you know, people really aren't thinking about us anyway. If they are, it's just for a few moments. Like, we are the star of our life, or we should be, right? And so it gives you this freedom to do what you want. You know, you, you have these mistakes, but then you learn from them. So I started sharing about my bankruptcy story, but here's how it happened. So we ended up losing everything. And, um, and I was just sad and depressed. And, you know, I used, you know, I went back to painting, which is what I had done since I was 14, 15 years old. And I started painting these little wooden surfboards. We had cut them out. We lived on the beach. And, um, and so we were in this apartment and I was still teaching at that time. And so I took the surfboards to school and I was painting them during lunch break. Well, I had 850 kids that would come through my classroom, you know, every week. So about 150 kids a day. And, um, and so I had those little surfboards out and every time they came in, they would, you know, a kid would yell, Miss Easley, Miss Easley, can you put my name on that? Oh my gosh, could you please put my name on that? And, and I would just, you know, go, no, you know, this is mine. I'm, you know, creating it. It's just something I'm working on. And, um, and they just kept doing that. Well, after about the, you know, 150th kid said, Miss Easley, will you put my name on that? A light bulb like goes off and I'm like, maybe I can help my family get out of this situation. So I talked to my husband, I talked to my mother-in-law, and we didn't have any money. Like I said, we lost everything. And so um, so she's like, well, we're going to need to go half in on this. Like, we're going to need to help you, and we'll you know, go as a family and try to figure this out. So I made these little surfboards, and I took them up to Pier Park, which is a place in Panama City Beach. And I asked um, the guy who was running the outdoor mall at that time. I was like, you know, the polyurethane was still wet. You know, it was still wet. And I said, I was like, you know, could I please, you know, sell these at your awesome establishment? And um, and he's like, he's like, um, you know, maybe, yeah, I think you could maybe make some money off of this. And so we worked out a deal. I had to pay so much money a month to rent this 10 by 10 square, like right there in front of Starbucks. Right now there's like an airbrush place if you're, if you're ever visiting Panama City Beach. And, um, and so I set up my little spot and, um, and so we got ready to sell and nobody was buying. And I was like, freaking out. I'm, you know, sitting there, you know, we had, you know, roped my family in, we had all spent the weekends like sawing, you know, these wooden surfboards. And um, we got everything ready. You know, we paid our money, all of these things. And I'm like, this is my, my plan B. Like I'm not even 30 and I failed this much and I've had to give, you know, two cars back. I mean, I just felt like such a loser. And, um, and so, and again, if you're just popping on, I want to share this for you because I know some of y'all are in a place where you're thinking, I, you know, I'm, I'm about to lose everything or I might be losing everything. Like if you feel that I want to just share so much that, you know, no matter what happens over the next, you know, 30 days or whatever it is that I, I think there's always reason to have hope and um, there's always a reason to have hope. And so 
And so we, you know, we're setting up and nobody was buying and I was so frustrated. And so my mother-in-law, you know, cause what do you do when you can't sell anything? You've already lost your house, your cars, your, you know, kids, like my toddler, you know, her room that we had just built on, like all of that had been lost. And, and so we go to Buffalo Wild Wings and we get a drink cause that's what you do. <laughs> and so um, I don't currently drink. I am not drinking for the year. Um, I gave that up for this year, but um, this is my second year of giving it up. I'll see if I'll drink after this year, but I don't know if I'm gonna go back to drinking or not. But um, so we walked over to Buffalo Wild Wings and I was a few drinks in and um, I'm like, this sucks. Like, you know, I have failed so much and I'm not even 30. Like I've literally gone bankrupt, you know, and I'm not even 30. and. And I just felt like such a loser, you know, another drink in. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, because when you're in your late 20s, like you don't think you have a second, third, fourth, fifth, 80th chance. Like you think you have a couple chances at life. And if you don't get it right, you're done. Well, that's how I felt about things. I didn't realize you could fail and fail and fail and fail again and keep trying. I didn't realize that. And I hadn't learned that lesson yet. And so, um, so we're sitting there and then I get a phone call from my husband and everything changes. So he calls me and he says, Heidi, he says, you have got to get over here. We have orders. And I'm like, you're a lion. There's no orders. And he's like, you have got to get over here like now. And so I look at my mother-in-law and she's like, go, go. And so, so I, I walk across the street cause it's, you know, if you're ever been to Pier Park, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings. And then where I was set up, it's just a little walk. Cause I was tipsy. So I walked across the street and I looked at my husband in that moment, everything changed. Um, he had this, all these paper tickets and he was holding them out and he was like, get to painting. You need to paint now, like start painting. And at that moment I was like flat on my face, done for totally like defeated. I mean, totally upset thinking everything was over, you know, that's how I felt. And then it was like, God had scooped me up and like said, not only are you going to be okay, but you're going to be able to do what you love forever, which is painting and art and creating. And, and I, I looked at my husband and I like smiled. I was like, Oh my gosh, are you serious? And so I literally went on to paint and paint. And, um, we, um, you know, I was tipsily painting. I'm not going to lie that night, but I was laughing and painting and just like this, just overcome with, with hope and joy of this is going to be okay. And I'm going to be able to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to be able to create and make art and do do something really cool with this. And so um, we went on in just two months to sell over a thousand hand painted surfboards, which meant this girl who usually took a year to paint one painting. I was like the slowest painter in the world. And I had to learn to paint fast because everything was custom. Like, here's the surfboard. What do you want on it? And I would customize it and put their name. And sometimes we'd have like 60 orders in a night. So what was happening was I shouldn't have known living there. Everybody was on the beach during the day. And then at night they came out to eat dinner and buy, you know, tourist things and stuff like that. So, um, so we just like, we, we killed it. It was awesome. And I just, it was like the first time I had this like hope of, oh my gosh, this is all going to be okay. Um, and so we went on to, you know, from there, we ended up moving back to Texas and I couldn't, you know, sell surfboards anymore in North, North Texas. So I ended up starting my paint party business. And from there, you know, the rest is history. Now I teach paint parties in person um, and teach paint parties online, as well as teach other people how to do paint parties and as well as paint parties online too. So, um, so I think number one is purpose. And I want y'all to just remember, like those of y'all that are scared, this book, I'm telling you, like there's something about this book that just has so many things that we have let get in our way. You know, I talk to to ladies all the time in Paint Party Headquarters who are so, so scared of doing a Facebook Live. Okay, raise your hand if you've done a Facebook Live yet. Like do a, I mean, I know you can't raise your hand, but you know, do a heart or a like or put a yes. And um, I wanted to show y'all really quick. So the Facebook Lives, I posted this embarrassing video on purpose to show y'all my awesome bangs back in the day. And I think this, Brendan put this together, but we did a funny, hilarious video. You need to look. But I seriously, like, let me show you how bad I was at Facebook Lives. Let me show you. Okay, so see how bad I was at Facebook Lives? Like, really, really, really bad at Facebook Lives. Like, awful. I mean, I, it looked like I was high, and I don't do that kind of stuff. And it looked, I was like, 
Hello, wonderful student. I like, I had no idea what I was doing. So if you want to watch a four minute clip of me embarrassing myself on Facebook lives, it is on my page. But what I'm telling you is a lot of people are so, so scared to do Facebook lives. This right here will help you get over it because once you start realizing the purpose of what you want to do, and a lot of people, especially through what's just happened, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, maybe I need to start doing my Facebook lives. You know, this is a another way to diversify. Um, whenever I went through bankruptcy, one of my biggest things was I never want to go through that pain again, ever. And um, volume, it need, oh, I can show you, I can show you with the volume. Let me get the, let me get the sound up. Hold on. Y'all got to see this. Let me see if I can um, back this, back this thing up. Hold on. Hello, wonderful student. I'm so excited to be your teacher. <laughs> I should not have gotten bangs. That was a bad idea. We're all scared. We're all doing this scared. And tell me if this is you or not. Does this part make you excited or does it scare you? So when I did my first day for five, I was like this, literally shaking. If you're scared to go live and you know you're going to shake, I've told this story before. My first time going live, this is how it was. Oh, I'll never forget. So I'm showing that to you because it is terrifying. Like I'm not, not joking whenever I say you will be scared. It will feel like you have gotten off of a roller coaster. But whenever um, I went through that pain of bankruptcy, and again, those of you that are just joining, um, I wanted to show you, oh, I'm so glad, Jamie. She's doing it scared. And the author is Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, and <laughs> that emphasizes the lack of energy. I know, Stephanie, it's like so... Oh my gosh, I was so bad. I mean, I'm not saying I'm perfect at them now, but after years of practice, it does get easier. And after just practicing in general, it gets easier. So, um, so whenever, you know, I went through that bankruptcy part and I, you know, felt like so embarrassed, all of that, the reason I'm sharing all this with you is because it gave me this like urgency of, First off, never wanting to feel that pain again, never wanting to feel um, like I can't go and, you know, go grocery shopping without having to look at my account every five seconds. Um, but also it gave me this purpose of like, I need to diversify. I need to make sure I have money coming in different ways. And um, how many of y'all have, have really felt that need right now of I need to diversify? Like maybe I need a few different ways to have money coming in. Um, so that leads me to number two. So um, again, three ways art can bring hope and how God and you know brought art to me and helped save me. And um, the second reason, excitement of new things. So right now I'm in the middle of working on, I just started it today. Um, I've been talking about it forever and now I finally have the time to work on it. But I want to do this giant plywood um, art piece of Alice in Wonderland. I'm not selling it so I can do it. But I'm doing this art um, art piece of Alice in Wonderland, and I'm so excited about it, and it's been in my brain forever, and I'm just trying to get it out onto this huge plywood, and I want to put it on our back porch. Um, we love the um, the saying, like, we're all mad here, because, you know, we're all, like, kind of creative, these, you know, kind of creative, crazy people, and then we also um, love, me and Pixie talk about, like, crazy dreams all the time, so we love the idea of, like, six impossible things before breakfast, and so... Um, so we want, you know, I want to have that up. I want to see that and create that. And so it gives me this excitement. Like, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'm not like, oh, I have so many more days that I can't leave the house. Instead, I'm like, I have so many more days I can work on this project, you know, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I think that's number two. We have to find things that give us excitement. Um, let me see. Jenny says, I've been through the same thing. I hope it makes you feel like all hope is lost. Yes, definitely. Um, so many of our stencil customers say they are changing up ways to sell. Yes, there's so many um, things. Let's see, Stephanie says before Corona, she was dreaming of diversifying. Um, yeah, I definitely think you need to be thinking of ways to diversify. Um, because you always want to, you know, if one stream of income is not coming in, you have another way. Um, I'm also like a huge Dave Ramsey fan. I don't know if y'all listen to his podcast, but anytime I feel like I'm starting to get off track with my finances, um, because we didn't get into bankruptcy because we were smart, right? We got into bankruptcy because, well, the housing market crashed, but also we weren't using our money right. We weren't doing the right things with our money. And so, um, 
And so I just want to make sure, like, if you're feeling that burden right now, that um, that there is hope, like that there will be hope again, you know, no matter what you're going through right now. I know that some of y'all are in worse um, positions than other people, but I want you to also stop letting fear get in the way. If there's been something you're wanting, wanting to do or something that you're wanting to learn about, start learning about it. You know, there's things that I've been wanting to do and going deeper with other things. Like I'm using this time to do that and not letting fear get in the way. So I want to just urge you to do that too. And then the third thing is um, bringing joy to others. Okay. So we talk about this a lot in Paint Party Headquarters about how like when we go live and we can paint something, how sometimes just, you know, usually you see me when I'm alive, I'm actually painting, right? Um, you know, just the idea of going live and painting, but what that therapy is bringing to somebody else. So yes, the act of us painting is bringing us therapy, but how many times do we, we're scrolling through Facebook and we see somebody else creating? How many of y'all stop and watch them? Just put a yes if you're that person. Let's see. Jesse says, I just posted an old drawing of mine. The, the, oh, she did the cat. We're all mad here. Love anything else in Wonderland. Can't wait to see. I know I'm so excited about it. Um, Wendy says, same here. I've been putting on hold to paint on a big canvas. Yes, so now's your time to do that. Um, so I want y'all to just um, remember, you know, bringing that joy to others. I am always, always stopping whenever I see somebody else creating. And there's something, it's almost like popping bubble wrap. It's like that satisfaction of popping bubble wrap or watching somebody draw, and, you know, or do calligraphy. Like I'm always stopping to watch. Um, and we want to bring that joy to others, especially during this time. So if you've been thinking like, hey, I want to you know, build an audience online so that maybe like, for example, so I'll go on essential stencils page and I'll do thing, I'll do like a, a project. And then if anybody buys those stencils during that time, I get a percentage, right? That's a way to diversify. Okay. So if I do a paint party in person, that's another way to get money. If I do a paint party online, that's another way to get money. If I have a program like Paint Party Headquarters, that's another way to get money. If I, um, you know, have deco art and I talk about deco art during a thing and I end up, you know, because I've built an audience, now deco art might pay me to do something like that. So I think a lot of times people, they want something more like that. They want to have an audience watch them do something and then, you know, hey, let me talk about the Sharpie. And if you buy the Sharpie using this link, you'll get a percentage. But they're so scared to go live to even put themselves out there that they can't even get to that point because you have to start at the, the first part. That's why I'm saying read this book. Because if you don't start at the first part, you can't ever get to those other things. Um, what I have, and I wanted to share this verse, 1 Peter 4.10. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay, the reason I'm sharing that is because we all have been given different gifts. Some of you are... Are certain, you know, some of you are certain, um, like really good prayer warriors. Some of you are great encouragers. Some of you are really talented artists. Some of you are, um, wonderful singers. I've seen people get online now and share how they're singing, how they're doing their music, and um, so many things that they're sharing with people. But if they don't start somewhere, they're, they're never going to begin to be able to start, you know, sharing their art, sharing what they love to where they can get to those places and positions where they could share about a product or share about something else. And um, it all depends on what you want. And I know my, my, um, my whole passion in life is like, just, I want to help artists so much know that there's so many ways to make money doing what you love. Um, because paint parties have changed my family, because like when I was, even when I was teaching full time, you know, I would go do a paint party and I could take that $500 I made and I could put that aside to use for whatever I wanted. Um, and so we would, you know, I'm a person who loves traveling. Like right now it's driving me nuts because I just love to travel. Like I love so much the adventure and all of those things. And so I would be able to take that money. And because we didn't have enough, I could use that and just start putting it aside for a trip or whatever I needed. Um, and then I started, you know, people started asking me like, how are you doing this? And so I started 
teaching other people how to do that. And then before I knew it, I was learning from somebody online who was teaching me how to teach even more people how to do that. But I think sometimes people think, well, it just happens overnight for them. No, if you watch that embarrassing video, you will see I've been doing this for a while, but there are faster ways of doing it. And I think right now, when, you know, in a few weeks back, we did, we did that 100 things challenge. I think right now, I want you to just open up your your mind your the possibilities of what what do i want like what what do i want to have what do i want you know 365 days to look like next year do i want these options do i want to you know go cuz we're all we're all starting somewhere right we've got to start you know we got to start somewhere we got to start with just our mom or just our our cousin watching us you know which is which is who was watching me the the first you know several times i did a facebook live nobody else would see it um, and forever I would go, hi, mom. And then finally I had to stop saying hi, mom, because it was getting weird with the replays. So you just have to remember that, it, you know, everybody starts somewhere. You, you're not just going to come out of the gate looking, you know, like, okay, you got that. I mean, if you do, awesome. I'm very happy for you. And I wish that was me, but I wasn't. I was the weird, you know, if you have bangs, I'm sure you're rocking them, but I couldn't. Me and Pixie had matching bangs that year. It was very, very strange. <laughs> it, was, it was not my best look. Um, okay, let me see here um, if there's anything to add to this. Um, Karen says, I used to hand letter all of our signs, and we hit, we got hit by a drunk driver and had no option but to change business direction, which turned into a full-time stencil company 13 years ago. Only God. So love hearing other stories. Oh, my gosh, Karen. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um isn't it crazy how out of something so bad, God can still use it for good? Isn't that crazy? Um, you know, at the time, you know, like your situation, I'm sure at that point you had no idea that it was going to change into a, a totally different, you know, your company, your stencil company. But I think back, even whenever I was going through the bankruptcy, at that time, I did not know why it was happening. I mean, obviously, I knew we had made some bad financial choices, but I didn't realize what the world was going through. I was in my late 20s. Um, so I didn't understand all of that, but I just remember thinking like, this sucks, like this sucks so bad now with, you know, what we're going through now, obviously I think this sucks. I hate this and this sucks so bad, but I know somehow, some way, you know, there has to be something. I mean, we've already seen some good coming out of it from, you know, people helping each other and, um, you know, just some of the stories that have come out of it of people like stepping up to the plate and, and, you know, helping, you know, elderly or whatever the case is. But it's just, it's just like when you're in it, it feels like there's never a way out and it feels like it's going to take years to recover. It just feel, and I just want y'all to know that when I was stuck and when I thought there was no way out and I thought that I was literally going to, you know, be done for and that was it and life sucks and this is what I'm dealt with. I I just want y'all to know that there is hope and that God knows what's going to happen. I mean, this isn't a surprise to him. Um, and we have to just be willing to like every day get up and try to be grateful. And I want y'all, if you're, you know, a lot of you that watch me are painters and artists. I want you to like think of a good project you can do right now so that when you get up every day, you're excited to work on something, you know, because we talked about art giving us purpose and um, excitement of something new and then also being able to bring joy to others. So I want you to think of those three things. What purpose can this give you right now? You know, whether it's you creating, whatever it is, you know, we, we have a joke in our family right now. We're like, it's Groundhog Day. It's March, you know, 47th. Like, we have no idea, you know, what day it is. We don't know what time it is. <laughs> Last night, I think we went to bed at 2.30 a.m. Like, we just, you know, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like a weird, eerie feeling. It's just this unknown. And so, so in order to like, you know, be able to mentally, you know, get through these days, like we have to have a purpose. We have to have, you know, a reason to get excited, like wake up and get excited about a project. And then three, I use the, um, and I think somebody was asking, um, is it Bernade? I think she said, first Peter 4.10, joy to others. So using your gift to share joy to others. Um, okay, I'm going to stay on here and see if there's any other um, questions, and then we'll we'll go. But make sure you get this book, guys. I just wanted to share this with y'all. And um, Phyllis says, watching from Lafayette, and oil is major employer. Oh my gosh, I know, and it's so low right now. Um, 
it is it is now so many more unemployed before the pandemic now with everything closed so many are looking for income i declared bankruptcy after my husband died in 2007 medicare paid nothing towards his loss um oh my gosh that is so sad um if you ever have the privilege to share the only ones that make money from that class. Oh my goodness. Yeah, um, I had heard about the asbestos thing too. I'm so sorry to hear that you were um, a part of that too. It's so crazy. I think it's so sad, you know, like I was telling um, the Paint Party Headquarter girls the other day, I was like, I just, I wish I could wave like a magic wand and make all this go away, but I know you know, we don't have that power to do that, but we have the power every day to get up and choose how we want to deal with the day. And his mercies are new every morning. So, you know, you might've had an awful day yesterday, but what can tomorrow bring? And what can I bring to the table too? Um, Sharon says, I'm a wedding, wedding officiant, make custom glass Christmas ornaments, custom wreaths, bridal flower, mobile and notary and love them all. Sharon has diversified. Good job. Hey, bunny. Hey, para. Hey, guys. Um, yes, God always does. Um, let's see. Okay, let me make sure. Our church is doing a worldwide fast on Good Friday if anyone wants to join. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Yeah, that's another thing, too. I'm going to talk about um, something interesting with Paint Party Headquarters tomorrow. I'm not going to share it on here because I want to... Um, share it with them first. Um, actually, I'm going to be challenging them to do something. So you'll probably be seeing some of them do some stuff soon. Um, yeah, God is a way maker. And um, Karen says, I so agree. I think God is totally changing hearts on the dependency of him. Yeah, I think right now, you know, so many, you know, even whenever we, we do diversify and even whenever we start, you know, bringing in income for our family, a lot of times we start to think like we're the provider, right? We're the one bringing in the money. And, you know, I think if anything, too, God's taught us a lesson right now, like he's the provider, like no matter what, we always have to remember that, you know, everything is his. We we're just trying to be stewards of it. Um, let's see. Chiquita says, um, I'm excited to learn more about painting and sharing my love of crafting and painting. That's awesome. Psalms 23, Sandy says, reminds us he takes us through. He never leaves us. That's so true. Um, yeah, right before I got on here, for those of y'all, the excite excitement of something new, I just posted the time lapse of getting the background. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone and then I was time lapsing, um, with Pixie's phone so I could, you know, cause it was like a lot to paint on that plywood. And I was just trying to get, um, get through that, that base coat. So it was nice to have some company while I was doing that part. Um, Susan says, painting a board right now for my pastor's house with Psalm 118.24, his favorite psalm. Yeah, that's another thing too. Um, you know, if you're in a position right now and you are needing something to paint, what could you paint for somebody that would give them hope? Um, Nancy says, I was an artist in high school and college, lost my confidence 40 years ago. Baby steps to finding my way. Thank you. Nancy, oh, please, please, woman, read this book. <laughs> read this book. Um, if you're just getting on here, I just want to recap real quick what I was talking about. Um, three ways God, you know, art can bring hope and how God and art saved me. Number one, um, purpose. And I did a quote from Big Magic in here. And number two, the excitement of, of new things. And number three, bringing joy to others. How you can bring um, joy to others. Um, okay, so let me see if um, we have any last questions. And I'm going to, and if I missed any comments, I'll try to go back for um for, for answering these two whenever I get on. Um, but anyway, I just want to say, um, right now I know it is so hard. Um, some of y'all, you know, aren't just going through the financial stuff. You're actually going through the, the worst of it, which is possibly losing somebody. And I can't, can't even imagine. I'm so, so grateful right now that my family's okay. Um, you know, we just don't know. We just don't know what's happening. We don't know what is what is coming up. Um, but I just want to tell y'all that, you know, wherever you're at, I think that we just have to remember like each day, 
we we got to get up. We got to figure out something we want to do and we need to make sure that we we find a purpose. So I know some of y'all are in different situations. Um I know that some of y'all are, you know, just trying to get through it. Um and I know a lot of y'all are in situations where it's it's the worst of the worst. You know, like right now I think about, you know, the things that let's say that, you know, I just, like I said, I love to travel and I'm sitting here complaining about, you know, not being able to travel where somebody else that's dealing with this has lost a loved one. So when you start to put things in perspective, like I just need to shut my mouth because, you know, yes, you know, we all have a a right to, you know, get upset about this and be frustrated and all of that. But a lot of times when we stop and put things in perspective, we, um, we forget, like when we start to think about other people instead of just ourselves, it takes that focus off of us and it makes us remember that we're not the only ones going through this. Like there are a lot of people, a lot of people that are, that are, are losing people and, and that, you know, we don't know what they're going through. Like we, it's the worst of the worst, but I want y'all to know that We have a choice every day. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't have a breakdown or you can't cry. Like I've had two since this has all started where, you know, I felt like just lost and like, oh my gosh, how are we going to get through this? And, and I think it's valid and it's okay. And we should, and it's all right, especially if you're a creative artsy soul, like that's how we are. We were made to, you know, to feel (laughs) like we were made to, to have all those feelings and have all of that happen. But then we have to, we have to have our time and then we got to get up and we got to do something about it. And that's why I share this. Like you've got to have a purpose. You've got to have excitement for something new and you've got to bring joy to others through that. So wherever you're at, whatever you're in, whatever situation you're in right now, I just want to say like, you know, that we're going to get through this. We need to make sure that we are being, you know, sensitive to the fact of, you know, there's other people that have it way, way, way worse than we do. And so we need to have, you know, remember that to be grateful and then to also think like, okay, if I am healthy, what do I want when all of this passes? Like, what do I want? Do I want to diversify? Do I want to make sure that when all of this happens, you know, goes, you know, when eventually all of this kind of calms down, you know, do I want to have something else in my life that brings in income? Um, And that's why I share this because a lot of you that have been wanting to do stuff online and you've talked to me about it a lot, um, it's the fear you get in your head about how you're going to look to other people. Um, I don't care. Like once I read this book, like it took away all the fear. I was like, I don't care. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say about me. You know, I feel so passionate that I have to share this message that there is a better way that there is a way to do these things and to diversify and to make extra money through art, being creative. How, oh my gosh, how dare, how dare a creative person make money? You know, like that's how we feel, right? I mean, when I had the first um, surfboard business, it was hard for like, you know, here's 20, you know, hand me $20 for the surfboard and I would have literally done it for free, right? Because that's who we are. We're creative. We think because it was fun, it should be free. <laughs> I mean, I've had so many conversations with some of y'all with that. Um, you know, art kits, you know, right now we're selling a lot of art kits. Um, and a lot of paint party headquarters ladies are selling art kits. And um, and some of them have had some backlash. Like, why, why are you doing that? You know, you, it should be free. And I'm like, we don't ask a yoga instructor or a restaurant owner or any of those people to give their stuff for free. No, we gladly pay them. Always, we gladly pay them. Um, but there's something about being a creative that it's like our soul like feels bad to ask money for doing something we love. And once you start to realize that that's the gift you were given. Like we are all given certain gifts and we have to be able to use them, you know, for God's glory. But there's also ways to use God's gift to make money for our family. And so, um, so if you've been in that state of fear, you've been scared, but you know, you know, you have the next 25 days or whatever, and you just want to start learning and get out of 
your head about, you know, one of the best things um, somebody said to me, they said, I was feeling bad about charging something. And they said, stop spending other people's money. Like, who are you to spend their money for them? Stop spending other people's money. And I thought that, and I was like, how many times do I go spend money? And if I had somebody go, you shouldn't spend it on that. Don't don't buy this from me. I'd be mad because I'm like, no, I really want that. Like, you know, and so it's just something in our head as a creative. And I want y'all to, to realize that there are so many possibilities. I think right now people are realizing the possibilities online and they're like, oh man, maybe I do need to do this. Maybe I do need to do something online. And they're, they're starting to think about that, but then they're thinking, I'm not sure what, you know, what I should do. And they're feeling behind and they're feeling stuck. They're feeling scared. They're wondering why it isn't working faster. But guys, anything worth doing that's going to be great takes time. It takes time. You can't all of a sudden go, okay, I'm going to start going live and immediately I should be making money. No, you have to build it. You have to build it. It takes time. And so I'm saying this because it's worth the time. So if you're a person who's like, yes, I want to create. I mean, did you, I don't know if you knew this, but if you're even scared of selling your own stuff, you could go live and paint and teach paintings. And then eventually, if you build an audience big enough, you could only talk about other people's products. So if you're really good at, you know, talking about other people's stuff, but you're scared to sell your own stuff, you could literally go live, talk about like essential stencil stuff. You could talk about like my friend Christy, you know, and whenever, you know, I talk about her stuff, she gives me what's called an affiliate fee for telling other people. And, and again, if you go that route, which is perfectly a great way to make money, I want you to remember that um, you only, only promote people or things that you use and that you trust. So you will never, ever, ever hear me talk about a product, a person, a, a um, item, a paint, anything, unless I personally use it myself. So I think that's really big because you'll get some people that online, they don't care. They'll talk about anything and anybody. I mean, they might not even have used it. You know, I've read this book twice and I read quotes from it all the time. Um, and this, you know, you can just go get. But I mean, I could I could put an Amazon link if I wanted to in here. And then I would get a percentage every time anybody bought one of these. I'm not going to um, because, I mean, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take any money from you. It's just Amazon will pay me like a small percentage. So there's so many things like that that you could do to build diversity in your business so that, you know, if something... I mean, God forbid anything like this ever happen again, but you have several different ways of making money. So I just wanted to um, share this with you. I wanted to share some of you know, my story with you so you know that you know I have gone through you know the sickness part. We've had a whole other history with sickness with my dad's heart transplant and my heart surgery, which is a whole other story. But, um, but as far as like losing everything and, and starting again from the bottom with nothing, I know how it feels and I know how, how scary it is, but I want to just take this minute to just give you hope if you're in that situation and you feel like there's no way that you can get past it. I promise it does take some time, but you can get there. And while you're thinking about that, I want you to think, okay, let me figure out how I can do this. So I never have to have to start from the bottom again. Um, so that's where, you know, like I've diversified my income a lot of different ways. So now I, thankfully at this time, I'm able to go, okay, this sucks so much. <laughs> it still sucks and it's not fun for anybody. Um, but there is hope and there's a way. And if I've built it once, I can build it a hundred times. So once you start to learn that kind of stuff, it really, really makes you feel, even though you're scared, even though it's frustrating, even though it's hard, it still gives you that like, okay, if I've done it once, I can do it again. If I've done it twice, I could do it, you know, I can do it again. I've lost it all. I've lost my cars. I've lost my house. I've lost everything. When I say cars, it's because I lost one and then lost another, not because I had two. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, if I've lost all that, I can, I can do it again. I can build it again. I know I can. I know I got it in me. I know God has put that fire in me. So um, I just love y'all. I want y'all to 
to just remember to put this in God's hands and take it day by day, but wake up and have something to work on. Um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of my project, the um, Alice in Wonderland project from time to time. So if you want to, um, so if you want to um, kind of watch the progress of me just doing something fun, that's just for me and my family, I want to, I want to share that with y'all. So be watching for that. All right, guys, um, let's see. I want, I think that's it. Let's see. This has been wonderful. Thank you for your time. Oh, from Australia. That's awesome. Um, okay, thank y'all so much for being here. And again, um, most of the time I have a paintbrush in my hand when I'm sharing with y'all live, so it's a little more awkward. Um, so sometimes I'm like, what do I say right now? What do I say now? Um, yes, Linda. She says, yes, Heidi, we will overcome with God. Yes, definitely. His mercies are new every day. So when you wake up, um, if you had a bad day the night before, I want you just to, what are we going to do today? You know, like right now, we totally feel like it's Groundhog Day at our house. And so um, I'm having to make sure we are, we got projects, we, um, the Renaissance Fair, which we go to every year. Well, usually every year, or every other year, um, it's been canceled and we love the Renaissance Fair. My family like loves it so much. And so um, we decided we're going to have one here and we're going to make crepes and we're going, Pixie wants to buy a turkey leg. Like we're just going to try to uh, try our best to make it fun. And, and silly here at the house. So anyway, I hope you are doing good. Um, let's see, if starting out, would it be okay to just paint live, not really teaching, just trying to engage? Oh, that is a great question. Yeah, so if you're just starting out with Facebook Lives um, and you're a creative, I highly recommend you just start painting. Just, you know, put the camera and start painting. Um, because that's the thing. You can't just start doing lives and just start trying to sell everything, right? Like, that's not right. Like, people need to get to know you. They need to, like, like now, like some of y'all are brand new to me and some of y'all have known me for a long time. Um, so you need to be able to, like, you know, paint and show them. And again, when you do start to, to offer products or services or, you know, trying to sell something to somebody, it needs to be something that you truly believe in. Like, it needs to be something that you are fully invested in like you know it's either a product I currently use for my business or I'm currently you know talking about and um, whatever that is make sure that you are always always in integrity with what you're telling your audience about that is one of the biggest things for me so I get people who send me products all the time they're sending me messages about products they're mailing them to me and um, and I do not just say, I mean, there's, I would say there's probably only 10% of the 100% of things that have been sent to me that I talk about online. And that's because if I won't use it for my business, I'm not going to tell Paint Party Headquarters or, you know, even y'all on this page, I'm not going to tell you about that product if I don't use it for my own personal business. So I want to make sure that, um, that whatever I do is always an integrity. So if y'all are creative people and you're trying to do something online, you've got to start somewhere. And the easiest, quickest way is through Facebook Lives. And um, so do your first Facebook Live. If you don't want to show your face because you're like, you know, scared or embarrassed, just point it down and create. But when you're creating, create something awesome, okay? Create something people are going to want to watch and see. Um, it doesn't have to be really hard. It can be super easy, but think of things that you would want to see and then create from there. Um, all right, guys, I think that's all I got. Um, let's see. Um, oh, good. Somebody said they bought Big Magic already. Yes, make sure you watch it. And um, watch it, <laughs> not watch it, or do the audio. Make sure you do the audio. And just um, for those of you that are not sure where to find my most embarrassing video ever that my awesome... Brendan put together. She's um, she does my videos. I'm gonna show y'all. Let me see if I can get it back to the beginning. Hello, wonderful student. I'm so excited to be your teacher. <laughs> We're all scared. We're all doing this scared. And tell me if this is you or not. Does this part make you excited or does it scare you? So when I did my first Facebook Live, I was like this, literally shaking. If you're scared to go live and you know you're going to shake, I've told this story before. My first time going live, this is how it was. Oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> Can you go back to my earlier videos on YouTube? 
you will be like, oh man, that girl. This is a judge-free zone. It's no judge. Hello, wonderful students. I'm so excited to be your teacher. I just want to say a couple things. And <laughs> this year's going to be really fun, really exciting. I'm going to try to use some technology like I'm doing now. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Hey, guys. I'm Lee here. And I just want to first tell y'all that the best Starbucks drink ever right now is the lemon cappuccino. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, Starbucks has this new secret menu. You have to try it out. It's so good. Have a great day and enjoy your summer. Bye. Well, not everybody's starting summer yet. Today's the last day of Pixie School. So we're officially starting today at 3.30. <laughs> I'm really excited about it and I'm just so happy to hear that y'all are liking it. I'm going to start videoing some new things this coming week. And I'd like to see what you want. So let me know. Please um, comment on this and tell me what. Um, <gasps> please comment and tell me an artist that you're interested in. And I'm going to be reaching out to them all this week. And please obviously make sure they're alive. And I would love to <laughs> reach out to them so they can be one of the artists. So, um, so I hope you have a great day and go get a lemon cappuccino. They're so good. Bye, guys. Alive? Why did I say that? It's just started since 2000. Get a grasp on that, 2016. And if you're using these steps, it's very, very fun and profitable and exciting to do these from your homes. You can actually do Facebook Lives in your own house. <laughs> I know, Chiquita, isn't that awful? So I just Christina. <laughs> you have to start somewhere. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! To be able to hit a button and go live and announce to the world whatever you have to offer. Like, that has never been available like that. I do not see online going anywhere, anywhere, anytime soon. But, you know, back then, I didn't know how to amp my energy up. We didn't know. Like, nobody knew what they were doing. So, right now, you may not know it, but I am amped up 30% more than I usually am. I teach you a specific thing. I have a formula that you can use for Facebook Live. Hey guys, Heidi Easley here, owner and founder of Texas Art and Soul. Hey guys, Heidi Easley here, and I teach women how to make money teaching paint parties. Hey guys, Heidi Easley here, Texas Art and Soul, and I teach women how to make money teaching paint parties. And I wanted to show you a couple of the designs that we have in Paint Party Headquarters. <laughs> Girl, you are dark. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to show you that it seriously does get easier. It gets better. And don't y'all love that when I'm like, I'm going to teach you a little technology. <laughs> it cracks me up every time. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, anyway, so if you are like seriously having trouble and you're nervous, I just want you to read this book. Um, yeah, that was when I, I got my spray tan. <laughs> I got too much of a spray tan and oh my gosh, it's like the kind that I got and then it just kept like, they said it, it did something over time. So over seven hours, I went from like, oh, like this is a good little sun-kissed look to it looked like I was at the Bahamas for like a month straight. So when I went on my next Facebook Live with Paint Party Headquarters, it literally looked like I um, had gone on vacation. <laughs> like I'd been gone for like a month. It was a really good tan though. Anyway, I hope y'all have a great day and I hope this helps you a little bit. Please, please, please read the book if you are scared about doing Facebook Lives um, and just get Get over your fear and start thinking of ways to diversify. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.